are you? There we go. Good. Nice, nice to meet you officially. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Thanks for joining. Yes, I'm excited. I'm glad we finally <laughs> worked out a time. I know that worked. Yeah, it's been tricky because um, I own another business besides this one. As you, I know you have your main business as well. So it gets a little tricky with trying to fit everything into the schedule. I know it does. Yeah, but I'm excited and I'm excited that we're doing it on Instagram so people can come in and ask questions and um, yeah, absolutely. So this is our first time we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to try and use the audio for this for our podcast so that we can, uh, dual purpose it. Um, so we normally for the podcast, um, we bring in guests that are anonymous and then we also bring in experts. And I thought we could use you kind of as an expert also success story. Cause I think you have a really interesting background that could be used to inspire other people to achieve what you've already achieved. Um, so would you like to kind of start out and give, I know a bit about your background already, but would you like to give our audience kind of your history and where you are today? Yes. Yeah. So I graduated a few years ago in 2016 from Clemson University. Um, I got a civil engineering degree and then I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do after college as many people don't. So as most, as I, most people don't. Yeah. Yeah. So I decided I would just, go for engineering because after graduation that would have been the easiest job for me to get um mm -hmm. so I just did engineering for a year and then a couple months in I realized it wasn't for me so I started to kind of soul search and figure out what I wanted to do um and then I started shadowing at a local brokerage in Seattle um, okay and there I kind of learned uh real estate and things like that and um, I started to take my online class and all that, all of that, and then moved to Tampa and became a realtor here. Um, and then when I was living in Seattle, I also had a few roommates there. And one of the roommates, her boyfriend at the time, um, I think they're engaged now, but her boyfriend had just sold his first house that he bought when he was 25. And he had profited like $200,000 on nice. it. And so that's kind of when I started thinking about like, oh, I should really like buy a house when I'm younger. Um, mm -hmm. And so I kind of started getting that goal in my head. And I wanted to buy it before I was 25, but I didn't quite make it. I missed it by like six months. But it's still oh, that's like, that's not a big deal. So you, how old were you when you heard about him selling his house for a profit and it like planted the seed that this was a path you wanted to go down? Yeah. So I was like, what else could I make 200000 I mean, I, that was just the lucky, he got really lucky picking a really good neighborhood that mm -hmm. wasn't up and coming. So I'm not expecting to make 200000 on this house, but hopefully make something once I Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my idea so, of, of why I started going down this path. And how and how old so and how old were you when you decided you were going to save for a house? Oh, um, I think I was twenty one, twenty two, oh, wow. twenty two, okay. something. So like you did that. it. So you you did it quickly because to save for a down payment. Usually the down payment, as you know, and from what I've seen, is usually the biggest obstacle because most people can afford the monthly number more or less, but it's saving for the down payment and then the closing costs are usually the biggest hurdles for people. So how are you able to do, because you're really young, because normally it's a goal that people don't start working towards until they're in their 30s. Yeah, so I didn't do like 20% down, so a lot of people think you need 20% down. I just did three and a half. Um, okay. which is the FHA loan, which is really common for first time home buyers. Yes. Um, and the reason I did that was I didn't want to put the 20% down. And that's like a personal decision. I know some people prefer that, but for me, I wanted to use the remaining money towards like any emergencies and things mm -hmm. like that. that so I did just three and a half down. Um, and then I had my part of my closing costs covered by the seller, which you can also do that a lot of people do. so it's kind of like financed in my loan per se but basically the seller um gave me some for that but i could okay. have paid 
for the closing costs, but it just made more sense for the seller to pay for it. And then so did they just give you, a, did they give you a credit essentially? Yeah. So it's essentially a credit. So not everybody agrees to that. Um, I, okay. I was able to negotiate that and it helps that I'm a realtor. So, it's, yeah. um, so I was able to know how to do that, but yeah, so I would always recommend asking the closing costs covered just because those are just, it, it doesn't it's go. It's a one-time like, fee. House. Yes. Yeah. So that's always a good option to do when you're buying a house is trying to get the closing costs covered. Um, and then I'm also like very blessed and lucky that my parents, like I grew up in a, in a nice family and like I don't have student loans. Um, I okay. had scholarships. So I'm very lucky like in, in, in the amount of bills I have. Um, they're definitely a lot fewer than a lot of people. So I was able to save money faster because of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause the student loan thing, I definitely think is an obstacle for a lot of people. And as you know, as a realtor, they look to your, your debt to income ratio. And if you have a lot of, you already have a lot of outstanding debt, it's harder than if you're going to go try and take out a mortgage. It is. Yeah. So I'm very lucky, um, on that aspect of things that I don't have like student loans and things like that. So it but that's impressive. Things... But it, mm -hmm. either way, it's still impressive because like at 20, at 21 or 22 to say, you know, I'm, I want to start saving to buy a house because it is a big commitment. Um, Alex and I, Alex who joins the podcast and we do, I do like a few sessions of the podcast where it's just talking about different topics. And Alex and I did one about home buying. We both just bought, this is my second property a little bit different because it's a primary residence versus a uh, co uh, commercial building. But Alex just bought also her second home. It's not going to be the primary, but we both ran into like a few issues that we hadn't anticipated. And so I always say that I think that home buying is a great financial goal to set and you can do very well with it. Like your friend did um, also because the <laughs> capital gain exclusion, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it also is a big responsibility. Like you can't just, <laughs> leave and if there's a problem you're the only one responsible for it like she had a, a furnace issue as well and I'm, I'm pretty sure she maybe also had a hot water issue and i had a furnace issue um within weeks of moving in like in the middle of the storm my furnace broke like so thankfully oh, i had a fireplace so i could sleep in front of the fireplace and keep the fireplace on so that the pipes didn't freeze but it's a big responsibility had i been out of town you know on vacation the week the furnace went out like you could come back to a pretty nightmarish situ situation yeah, yeah, you definitely get those um, issues that you wouldn't if you were renting. But mm -hmm. to me, it was just, I was renting anyways. Um, and to me, I, I feel like that's a waste of money, uh, the rent. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a personal decision. A lot of people decide to invest instead. But for me, I felt like I, I wasn't going to be investing that money anyways. I, I wanted to, I was renting and it was kind of just flying out the window. So I, yeah, I want to buy a property that I can rent out in the future too. So I want to be able to build a portfolio. So that was the other reason for wanting okay. to buy as soon as I can. So then I can keep buying like primary residences and then renting out because the down payment is a lot less um, if people don't know, but yeah. So for, for, a, a, for a rental property. For, for if you are buying as a primary residence, you live in it, and then you move out and buy another primary residence, the down payment is a lot lower as a primary than- as a, Yeah, oh, because I was gonna say, yeah, because as a primary, because my first building was commercial. Commercial require is also a shorter term mortgage. They don't do 30 year commercial. Um, yeah. And then you have to put more down as a commercial. That's um, interesting. Your first, was it your office or? It was my office, yeah. So I bought the building. Um, cause I think it is really interesting. You, you pick up, I think that obviously it's great to go to college, but I feel like you also learn a lot in the real world by hearing other people's experiences. And I noticed that all of the small business owners in my town owned their buildings. Oh, that's yes. interesting. Well, cause you have more control then cause you have fixed cost. Um, and huh. the town has been changing dramatically. It's not, it's North of New York city. And there's been a lot of influx of New Yorkers, which has been, fortunately I bought five years ago, but it's been driving the prices up. There's only mm -hmm. so many spots, right? Commercially zoned spots. And um, so I noticed that everyone else had uh, all I sat down when I bought the business and met with other business owners and asked what they did right and what they thought they did wrong. Like what would they have done differently as a business owner? Because most of the business owners in towns were, you know, older, like 50s, 60s. And I was 28, I think. Yeah, yeah I think I was 28. So I was like, I want to see what they think what they would have done differently, what they think they did well. And then I'm just going to, you know, why recreate the wheel and just try and 
mimic what they did well. And they all owned, for the most part, their buildings that they had their businesses in. And so when I bought it, it was a lease and I bought the business for my father and he had just done a handshake deal. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. So those are not ideal because yeah. the guy, so the building had sold previously and he just like never renewed the lease. I think then maybe at one point he had a one year lease. So I was like, oh, this is not good because the building was bought by someone out of New York City, which meant like most likely they were going to try and make a profit from their investment, meaning that most likely the rents were going to go up, which is exactly what happened. So I started looking for a commercial property first because the business is essentially my baby. And so I wanted to take care of the baby first. Um, yeah. So I started with a commercial property as my first real estate purchase. That's so interesting. That's very impressive. And at 28, it's, it's, yeah, because commercial properties aren't cheap. So that's no, they're not, they're not cheap. Yeah, it took, two, it took two years to find it. So I bought the business at 28, which is the first big investment. And then I bought the building, which is essentially a house that's commercially zoned. It's you're probably from mixed use property. So it's residential or commercial, but you have, you can run an office out of it. So for people who aren't listening and you, you probably know this, but you can't just set up a business and unless it's zoned for that. Yes. Yeah. So were um, you living in as well? Mm -mm. No, no. Just the, yeah. yeah. So it looks like a house, but it's commercial. So it wouldn't, I wasn't eligible to take out a residential mortgage because of the zoning of mixed use. Um, and that it was going to be primarily a business and not a, a residence. Yeah, no, that's yeah. awesome. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, I started with commercial. So very different process for commercial lending than it is for primary. Yeah, definitely. I haven't done commercial. So that was, it's probably easier for you to do the, your second time around. You probably thought it was a lot easier, right? <laughs> so honestly, the thing that I find really interesting about home buying is it's a very stressful process. I think no matter what at least mm -hmm. in my, my take on it, I kind of thought it was going to be pretty easy because I'd already been through it. Um, and I thought residential was going to be easier. And I don't know if it's just because my financials are complicated because running multiple businesses, it, it's, I'm not like, I don't just hand in a W2. I have like, a, they have to do like a whole audit of like all the different entities. And yeah, so it was a little bit complicated for that reason. Um, but yeah, I found it to still be a stressful process. Yeah. I bought in a competitive marketplace, so the houses moved very, very quickly, which is stressful because you find yeah. something you like and it could be gone by the end of the day, which to me is like, that always makes for a stressful environment. Um, but mm -hmm. I do, I think this is really interesting to hear because, you know, the listeners hear my, you know, my experience and Alice's experience. And um, I thought it was really interesting because you're probably one of the youngest people at least that we've had on to buy a property. I mean, to buy a property at 25 is a big, it's a big deal. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm very glad I was able to do that. Um, sorry, my like screen is going weird. Is it showing me? Oh, now you're a little dark at the moment, but it seems like it goes in and out. It's so weird. I like pressed the screen and then it got dark. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to fix it now. So I guess it's just dark now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, apparently you can do filters on these now. I can't, but I don't know how. I don't want to mess it up. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just dark. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's definitely, it's been great. I just bought it this past December. Um, so I've, I've really enjoyed living in a home. Um, I've really loved, and like the past couple months, this is something that um, I didn't know I would really benefit from uh like emotionally but with the pandemic and everything it was just yeah. really nice knowing that i could potentially rent out the extra rooms if i needed to mm -hmm. um, knowing that my payment is fixed for yeah. 30 years or whatever i end up doing um so that was really nice because i know a lot of people are struggling right now finding ways to make extra money so i was like well if i needed to i could always rent out the two rooms so absolutely so they, yeah, yeah. that's a question so you did a 30-year fixed mortgage i did yeah i just did 30 mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. normally what i recommend to people because as you said it's a fix you know what your fixed cost is for 30 years if you want to pay more on the mortgage you can but like yeah. for instance you know a global pandemic hits then now you have more flexibility with your budget to only make what is required and not have to do anything additional Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly why I did it. I wish I could make this lighter. Is it too dark? No, I can see you. It looks like it does look like you added a filter, though, from when we started, but I can still see you. I don't know what I did. 
Okay. This Instagram, this technology, right? Oh, there you go. That looks brighter. Yeah, I'm shining towards the window. Okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's got, a, it's had a lot of emotional benefits for me as well as financial, which I think people don't always consider when, mm-hmm. when like in the finance world. Um, I feel like a lot of people who are focused on investing don't consider the emotional side of things and how it can make you feel safe in the in the property during things like the pandemic, which nobody really yeah. thought would happen. So that was a very unique um, experience for everybody. Was there anything that um, surprised you with home buying? I mean, because like, you are a realtor, so you take, you walk obviously a lot of people through the process, but was there anything that surprised you when you were doing it personally? Um, no, not just because I've been, uh, I've helped other people buy the home. Mm-hmm. It was honestly, a lot easier to be my own client because usually when you help other people you're stressed how like the inspections and appraisals come back yeah as a real time and you're stressed what the other party will think about how they come back and so it's like double the stress so when i was doing it it was a lot easier a lot easier like, yeah i know this isn't a big deal so i i'm not going to focus on it like things with inspections like something always comes back i'm sure you know and, and i, I yes. feel like yeah, and I feel like And I'm then they like, don't yeah. always catch everything. Like for instance, my furnace was inspected, it is new. It, it's just a fluke that it, something internal went wrong with it, which they would have never caught. Um Yeah. I had one I feel bad one of my clients bought her first home in September and two weeks into the home her whole house flooded because there was like a pipe that had a tree root grow into it or something like that. And so oh, for gosh. the last eight months, she's been working with insurance, trying to get the payment. Because insurance obviously is not the easiest to no. do things with. So, no. so I felt bad, but she was so optimistic, and she was like, "This is home buying." I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. You just have, to, and that's why I always really stress the emergency fund so important because yeah. you know I moved into a new home, renovated, so my I was anticipating no upfront cost. Where my commercial property, I knew there was work that needed to be done out of the gate, and so. I had budgeted to initially put money into the property and I had not budgeted to put any money into a brand new property. Um, yeah. And then, you know, things come up. What is your advice for other young people that are looking to save up and buy their first home, both from your own experience, but then also being a realtor? Um, my advice would be to, um, it, it's a personal decision. So if, if you decide you want to, but your friends or parents say it's a bad idea, then I would just, listen to you, like, listen, obviously listen to why they think it's a bad idea, but at the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's up to you. Cause I have a lot of clients whose, whose parents tell them, oh, it's a bad time to buy. It's a good time to buy. And then, and then they regret not buying cause yeah. it's ultimately up to them. Um, so that's one advice. And then another, another piece of advice is, is definitely plan an emergency fund and your upfront costs are. So I would recommend starting looking into budgeting for the down payment at least like six to 12 months before you want to buy. So if you're thinking about buying next year, I would just sit down look at everything you have and calculate what your down payment should be. And then the cost of the inspection and appraisal, everything like that. Um, and I have like worksheets for that to, to know. Oh, you do? Yeah. 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 So oh, I, I don't know if you want me to send you like a link or whatever, but um, yeah, send us yeah. a link and we'll we'll post it when we post this. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so it's like a workbook I made. It's like 21 pages. I That's just great. Down, did it all, but it basically goes over like what your credit should be, um, what down payment you should have, how to calculate that, and and how to just make it like a. And I'm sure you do this too, but make it like a bite sized goal. Like <laughs> when you look at it first, like about seven thousand or whatever your down payment it seems like a lot but um but at the end of the day like once you divide it out by 365 days it's like not as much um so that's another tip but yeah and also try to find an area that will hopefully go up in value so right that's that's always a good good tip so definitely and just to kind of when you when your friend mentioned you made the two hundred thousand dollars, so a nice tax. So you get a few tax breaks by owning. Um, 
yeah, you get a tax break when you're when you're paying on, on your mortgage. Um, and then additionally, I think the biggest tax break is when you go to sell if it's your primary residence. Um, so you have to meet the IRS criteria for primary residence. Um, but if you do meet that, then the if you're a single person, 250,000, uh, you have a capital gain exclusion on and as a married couple, you have 500,000, meaning that you don't pay any tax on that growth as long as it's your primary residence. And I've seen some people make the mistake of like renting out their property and then going to sell it and not realizing that had they sold it while it was primary, they would have not been taxed. So something to consider. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's why some people can make so much money with the home buying because there's no huge tax ramification as long as it's your primary and you're within the capital gain exclusion. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So there's, Oh, I think we lost you for a sec here. There we go. You're back. Perfect. Okay, great. great. Um, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to owning tax-wise as well, and I'm sure you could speak more to that um, end of things. And obviously talk to a CPA too if you guys um, have any questions. But, yeah, there's. I definitely don't regret owning a home. Um, I know things can come up and – things can break but at the end of the day it's it's your own property and and you can sell it and make money later or you can rent it out and make money later so yeah absolutely yeah and i always say to people because i think a lot of people get hung up on wanting to get like their perfect version of a house is their i like to call it a starter house so you typically yeah. don't get in my opinion you don't get everything that you want at least not out of the gate so you'd be willing to make some sacrifice and determine what is your priority. And as you said, you can always then keep it and make it a rental and then buy another property that maybe has everything that you're looking for or more of the things that you're looking for. But I think the key kind of like with the job is you want to get your foot in the door with it. So mm -hmm. to be able to get into your first home, it might not have everything that you're looking for. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Like it really is just the foot in the door because once you have that set payment for and you live in that home for – a few years then that's that's good because your rent goes up every year like, my rent was right going up um when i moved here it went up at like a hundred dollars the following year and that's, if you keep living somewhere like uh, per month money that adds up so um it's definitely and and i was living in a one bedroom <laughs> so yeah here I get you can't rent a room out and, yeah yeah exactly. so it, my rent, I mean, my mortgage now is a little higher than my rent was before, but I get two more bedrooms and, and all mm -hmm. of that. So. And, yeah, and I, I have the caveat too is um, I did buy my house at 25, but the, the properties in Tampa aren't as expensive as New York probably. So Yeah, well, so. yeah, no, and it, uh, it all, and I didn't buy my, I bought my second house is in Salt Lake City. So um, <laughs> yeah, and which was like a surprisingly more expensive than I anticipate it but um yeah it all it all depends on the area and that's, that's what i also say to people if you know you're for instance we have a lot of listeners from uh the new york city metro area so maybe you don't buy your first place there maybe you rent there and then buy a weekend home in a community that's within driving distance that's more affordable right so there's like a lot of various ways i think that you can do it if you want to get into home ownership um and so for those that and that might change right now with the work from home with covid maybe Mm -hmm. you might not have to be in the more expensive city for your job. Maybe you'll have a work from home option. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you can be creative about how you're going to go about it depending on your work and uh, the city that you're living in. Cause as you said, certain areas are more affordable than others. Yeah. And so the Tampa area is more affordable. Um, and so I have a lot of out of state people who, mm -hmm. and, and want to invest here just because it's cheaper and, and prices are going up. So so they're trying to get in here because it's too expensive in some cities, like New York, for example. Um, I had somebody from Austin, Texas. Um, just yeah, Austin's different areas, another one. Uh, that it's hard to get. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and then it's funny you mentioned the, uh, the COVID uh, effects right now because I was... Uh, I, yeah, you froze. I can hear you though. Okay. There can you go. hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Yours is still frozen, but I can hear you. So I don't know what's going on, but. Um, oh, that's odd. 
Yeah, it's been on the same freeze frame, but I can hear your voice, so I figure it's it's just my internet, probably. It's good, um, yeah. Yeah, so I had somebody I met yesterday at an open house who, it, his kids live in New York, and they want to uh, get out of New York after everything that happened this past couple months. Is they realized they don't want something like that to happen again. They realized they don't want to live mm -hmm. in a city anymore, so I think... That's got, I've heard, I've seen some articles that say it'll be a trend for people in the city to move to the suburbs. So I, I don't know. We'll see if that, that'll it's, happen. But it's, it's a, one of the predictions for. Yeah, that. I could, I could definitely see it because I feel like, especially New York city got hit so bad and New York city was definitely a place like you didn't invite people over to your apartment. That wasn't like a thing. Like you yeah. met people out at bars and restaurants and that landscape has changed as well as a result of COVID. Um, so yeah, it'd be, it'll be interesting to see how that affects the rental and real estate market in New York and the surrounding areas. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about your site? Because in addition, I think, didn't that in your home buying inspire you to also oh. build out your blog? Yes. Yeah. So I started, I, I've been wanting to start a blog for a oh, a while now probably like eight months or so but I just at first I was like oh maybe I'll start it for realtors and then I was just trying to think of what I wanted to start it for um and then when yeah. the, then I was thinking about something that I'm passionate about and um it's it's a lot of buyers that I get don't don't have like you said like don't even know where to start on saving for down payment or, yeah. or building credit and things like that. So I wanted to start something that um, could help them and could help other people who are in the same situation that need help with personal finances. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot I myself am still learning about personal finance. So I figured the best way to learn is to, to, to uh, anticipate teaching someone else. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to learn and then teach others as I go. So that's why I started the Money Minimalists. Um, and so I, I write a lot about real estate on it and also other personal finance things that interest me. And then I had you, and then that I'll probably publish your guest post sometime next week. Um, and then I'm just trying to trying to learn more about investing and everything um, for millennials, especially because. A lot of us don't know. Like I personally don't know. A lot of my friends don't know. We kind of do what our friends tend to do, and so I'm trying to educate myself more on that um, as I educate others too. So that was kind of the the reason for the blog, and I really enjoyed it so far. I I, I get up excited to write um, for it, so it's been a lot of fun and and um, really educational too. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think the hard part about personal finance is you don't learn it in school. No. So it's not taught anywhere. So you end up figuring things out like as you go. So you, you know, you learned about home buying and, you know, you were fortunate to hear about that from your roommate's boyfriend that you could do so well, but like, there's no, it'd be great if they, they taught it in some classes. Sometimes there's a class in college, but not often. And sometimes there's a class in high school or elementary. It's just, but it's not standard that, that you learn about personal finance, which is, yeah. which is and unfortunate I, because by understanding it, I feel like you have a leg up in life. I, yes, I definitely agree. And I think that a lot of what we don't understand, we fear. So mm -hmm. the best is really scary. Home buying seems really scary, but there's a lot of things that you can do to educate yourself and, and make it seem more achievable. And a lot of us think, oh, that's for when we're 30 or 40 or 50. Yeah. It's just the longer we wait, the harder it gets to accomplish. And it's just, it, um, it's that example that you had in, in your class with the compound interest. Compounding of interest, yes. Yeah, so that's just so powerful. Like it just, time is such a, thing that we can have to our advantage and we need to mm -hmm. definitely take advantage of it. Otherwise um, we lose a lot of money. Like time is literally money. And time is literally money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. In that instance. So. Yeah. So it's important to not, I still 
don't fully understand um, things about investing. And it's like, to, I'll admit it, like it still kind of scares me a little bit, but uh, I'm learning to get over that. And, and hopefully um, the community that I hope to build will learn to get over that as well. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. So what we'll do is we'll link um, your blog. And then if you want to send us over the information, the workbook for home buying, that'd be awesome because I feel like that's definitely a top question that we get. Um, and then um, we're going to put this up on the podcast as like a um, success story. And then we'll, we're going to take the audio from this. We're going to attempt to take the audio from this and put this out on our podcast network. Um, so, but it was fun to be able to see you live and record it this way rather than just yeah. audio. Yeah. Does anyone who's watching have any questions for us? Let's see. Do we have anybody? I think it says a couple people. Yeah. I don't see any questions in the little box, but we might get some right. when we, we post it. But um, mm -hmm. if we get any questions, I'll, I'll link them with you so that you can answer. Um, but I, I think that workbook would be amazing because home buying, I, I really believe is one of the fundamental goals that people should work towards, you know, if it's within their purview, I mean, depending yeah. on student loan debt and, and so forth, but it is something that I do usually stress to people that this is a good goal to work towards because you can do well financially. And if you're going to be, you don't want to, I think you're better off, you know, owning rather than renting for 30 years. You know, if we can get, we can get you into a home. I think that's a, and you're re and you're ready for it. You're ready for the commitment. I think that is a best mm -hmm. best case scenario. Yeah, because your rent is always going to go up. Like I was talking to yes. somebody who bought it five years ago in a neighborhood that's really hot now, but he bought the house mm -hmm. five years ago. And his mortgage is ten dollars a month. <laughs> so like, I right? Don't know where Rather than rent that maybe yeah, like started at five hundred is now a thousand. Yeah, I don't know where he can where you can find an apartment right now for 500. So it's just probably can. Yeah. So if you wait, the longer you wait, the harder it gets to, to get into, to, um... yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause life gets more, I think in my opinion, life get, can get, can be more complicated the older that you get. Oh yeah. Man, Instagram with this freezing of the screens here. Oh, there you go. Well, um, okay. and how, can you pronounce your name for me so I don't butcher it? I think it froze again. Oh, no. I can hear you now. I can hear you. Okay, okay. Can you say your name, your full name for me so I don't butcher it? Yes, yeah. Senia Cornova. So it's can see it. Because where are you from originally? I'm <laughs> like, butcher it. I was born in Russia. So I I was five when I moved to America. So they mainly been in America. But. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Well, this was a wonderful story. And I think it'll be very motivational for our listeners. So I appreciate you coming on to share your experience with us. And then we'll link to your blog. And then hopefully we can push out. We do a weekly newsletter. So maybe we can even include your workbook in that. Yes, that would be awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope you have a great rest of the day and stay safe with COVID. And I'm sure we'll be talking thank to you soon. Thank you. Have a great day. And thank you again for having me on this. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. Bye.